right, we're back for real this time. And now we can talk about the second between building the first one and the the okay, so when we talked about one of the relationships changing in Deadpool and Wolverine that make the first two kind of pointless, basically Wade and Vanessa are no longer together. Yeah, which is a bummer. I, I love them as a couple. I know. It's like, uh, and I wanted to make a comparison to like, you know, Alan Grant and Ellie from Jurassic uh, Park. Like they were really good as like, a couple, but then you just split them up in the third movie. It's like, okay, well, the whole point of that. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And also, like I said, so that's out of the way. Let's talk about the positives. Yes. All um, of the cameos. I think we've got to go in order. We start with the very first scene. Okay. So, uh, so uh, I think uh, the first one was Hulk, right? No, 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 go back to the very first one with um, the opening credits. Tell me that's the first one, in my opinion. The TVA? No. So, okay, let me explain this. Okay, go, um, I'll, I'll let you go. Okay, so, the very first thing we see is Deadpool go to where um, Wolverine was buried in the Logan movie and yeah. dig up his grave. Or dig up his body. And then the TVA comes out, and we just see Deadpool just using, like, literally just desecrating the corpse and just, like, using all the adamantium bones from Wolverine's body as weapons against the TVA. With the NSYNC's Bye 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 playing. That has been stuck in my head for several days. I mean, oh, you no, actually it's... see Deadpool doing the actual choreography from the music video. And this scene of him doing this to the TVA is the best scene in 3D. No, I can agree with, like, all of the Antimanium bones just flying. Yeah, just all them flying, some of them at you, and then just sometimes they are hitting, like, the um, opening credits. Yep. Um, so, what were you going to say was the, the first, like, uh, big uh, cameo? John Favreau. Oh, John Favreau, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's kind of the first thing we see. If you know the Deadpool movies, you know they're not in chronological order. The first thing chronologically is um, him trying to get become an adventure mm -hmm. um, in Earth 616. And he's like literally interviewing with um, Happy Hogan, played by John Favreau. By the way, like, Will, did you notice that that scene said it was six years ago, meaning 2018? Yep, before Infinity, before Infinity War. War. Right around Infinity War. Yeah. I think a little bit before Infinity War, but still, yeah. Mm hmm. Wasn't Happy hit by the snap? I forget if he was or not. I don't remember if he was. We're spoiling for any more, but is that what we're spoiling? Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. So let's see what came uh, next. Uh I think it was during the search uh, when uh, Wade was trying to find another Wolverine. Yeah. So pretty much what they set up is that. Um, the TVA wants to recruit Deadpool. We don't really figure it out, but apparently, um, this one guy at the TVA Paradox, who was a very minor character in he the was comic, the guy who I thought was kind of forgettable, to be honest. He, he, yeah, he is a very minor character in the comic. Like literally, uh, I didn't read a whole lot of stuff focused on the TVA when I was read Marvel, so I had to look this up. But apparently, he was part of this like jury meeting that was. Or this trial that the TVA was holding around some comic straight in the 2000s. And literally some characters come in and just like shoot up this like trial. And Paradox is apparently one of the characters who was killed in that trial. Mm. That's his like only major contribution so far. As uh, far as I can tell. Okay. So anyways, yeah, he, he was pretty forgettable. But he, he wants to... Um... Uh, so he's pretty much... They established that each of the timelines have what is called an anchor beam that kind of holds that Not reality together. together. Yeah. And Deadpool's, the anchor beam for Deadpool's universe was the um, Wolverine we saw in Logan. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to find a new Wolverine to kind of replace that Wolverine, which. Because so really now Wade's uh, universe is in jeopardy. Yes. Yeah, so he, we get a montage of him just like trying to find another Wolverine to. Uh, replace 
which uh, leads to some pretty humorous moments. Yes, like they actually find a five foot three Wolverine, which they yeah. just they Hugh Jackman short. <laughs> and you got some montages from other Wolverines across the comics, including a Henry Cavill Wolverine. Yes, which I thought was so cool. I didn't catch that the uh, it was Henry Cavill the first time. Yeah, yeah, I did not catch that. And also, that's when we see him fighting the Hulk in the montage. Or, oh yeah, we don't see the Hulk's face, but we just know it's the Hulk. Yeah, pretty much. If you don't know comic books, um, Wolverine's first appearance had him in a a Hulk comic, Hulk one eighty, I believe. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Where, anyways, um, the numbers were never my thing. I was never good at tracking the numbers specifically. That's all right. Anyways, um, we see Wolverine fight the Hulk. Wolverine's first appearance where he fights the Hulk in this 180 comic. So they just kind of partially recreate that and just have Deadpool there. Yeah, and then just Deadpool just gets the daylight speed out of him every single time. Yeah. Um, but then he finds this one, one Wolverine you know, who has a troubled past because he feels like he let his whole team down. Yep. Um, we find out more about it later. Uh, he brings out Wolverine to the TVA, and then they both get uh, pruned. Was that the term? They get well, both get pruned. Yeah, they got sent to oh, shoot the I'm void. Helmet. The void. Yeah, where we get an awesome action se- fight scene between the two of them. Uh, uh, oh yeah, and they're like, "Let's give the people what they came for." With funny enough, a 20th Century Fox uh, logo. Yeah, there's the 20th Century Fox logo buried in the background. Which, by the way, um. The X is in the... During the montage, we see Wolverine on a cross, or a yeah. cross shape like an X, which is a very famous image from the comics. And the X and Fox is, like, lined up the same way. Mm. So anyways, after this fight is when we get some of the best cameos. Oh, yeah. One First, of which, uh, played by uh, the one, the only, Chris Evans. Yeah, we see Chris Evans there. Um, and, uh... Funny enough, uh, he does catch us uh, by surprise uh, uh, a bit because uh, a couple of bad guys uh, try to capture them. And uh, he's also wearing like a cloak, so you can't see a superhero outfit, but you can tell he's wearing like a blue uniform. Yeah, which makes you think this is another variant of Captain America. But when, well, really, he when he, he yells, flame on, meaning he's Human Torch. Yes, which was awesome. And by the way, those baddies, we had Tyler Mean back to Sabretooth. The first X Men movie ever. Oh yeah, we got the, the guy who played Toad, right? Ray Park, yeah, yeah. I think that was him. Some of these were just like there, and they, I think some of them were recast. I'm not sure which ones were though, and which ones weren't. Yeah, they were really only in there for like that one yeah, scene. Um, so apparently, everyone online says that that was the actor who played Asriel in First Class, but um, my wife is convinced that it's someone else. Really, it kind of looked like him. Yeah, she she's. Thinks he just looks different. Um, I might, yeah, I might have to look up the cast. Yeah, I'm blanking on his name. The guy who plays Pyro, I know she's a big fan of him. Who? So she was surprised when she because she did not know he was going to be in the movie. Who? The actor who plays Pyro in the. Uh, okay. Movie. She's actually watching the going back and rewatching the X Men movies now over in the other room, <laughs> like right now as we speak. But that. But well, we also get another character named Cassandra, who is in another universe, the twin sister of Charles Xavier. This is a character taken from the comics. And she's pretty much the one running the shot, calling the shots in the void. Yeah, um, I did see some rhetoric online thinking that this was like a gender swapped Professor X, but no, this is um, a completely different character from the comic. Yep. Apparently she was leaked a little early. Um, also, we got Juggernaut, part of her, who's a part of her crew. And from X-Men, bunch of... Last Stand. Yeah, we also got the Russian guy from Punisher, or, or a variation of him. Yep. I think that actor's dead. I think so, yeah. I could be wrong, though. Just just don't quote us on that. Right. And they bring back Elias from uh, Loki. Yes, we get him. Um, we also get Deathstrike. Yep. I think we get and... uh, Callisto from Last Stand. Um, and... and uh, no. So... Uh... I forgot what to. So Cassandra wanted to enslave, waited in the lo- list variant of uh, Logan, but they managed to escape. No, she wanted to use them as food for Elias because she had to deal with Elias. That uh... right, right. But they managed to escape. 
Chris, and... Human Torch dies in the process. Yeah, yeah. So after Wade pretty much threw him under the bus, which we find out later is not true. Yeah, <laughs> love, love that post credit scene. Oh yeah. Then that sets him and Wolverine off. Oh, by the way, did you notice what they escaped on was the um leg of the Ironmonger from the first Iron Man movie? Yes. Yeah. And then they um, encounter, and then they encounter a nicer version of Deadpool, played by Ryan Reynolds and Dogpool. And Dogpool, who is one of the best parts of the whole movie. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And then uh, eventually and they, have, he and they, them... and they want to try to meet up with uh, these outsiders. Uh... Sort of resistance team, which that resistance team is our next big cameo. Bucket. Uh, three big cameos uh, and a big return. Four. Oh, four, yeah. You want to go first? Uh, we'll just take. We'll just wrap them off each other. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. No, you can go first. With the first one. All right. So first off, we have Electro, Jennifer Garner again. Blade, played by Wesley Snipes again. We have uh, Gambit, played. Uh, funny enough, I actually picked her. They would, they would pick this guy to play him, Channing Tatum. So apparently, there was a Gambit movie in the works for a while that would have had Channing Tatum as Gambit, but it never, like, they never got to make it. Yeah. To pay attention to his dialogue as Gambit, he's like saying, "Like, I might have been bo- born the void," indicating that like his movie never existed. Right. Yeah. And, and then the last, last one is um X twenty three from Logan. Hmm. Um. Throughout the movie, uh, Deadpool is telling the this Wolverine variant how much the other Logan's death meant to everyone because it was. And to X twenty three specifically, so it's cool to see um, X twenty three again. Mm-hmm. And so they band together. They go to Cassandra's lair again, which, by the way, is basically just a, a big skeleton of Ant Man. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a skeletal remains of Ant Man turned into a fortress. Yeah, I swear if, uh, that that Paul Rudd joke was the best joke they were saving. Then. I just did not laugh that much because they just showed it in the trailer so much. Yeah. And then we also see that she has a sling ring just to get them back. Oh, yeah, this, this movie was just like filled with Easter eggs. And when we get back, uh, some other characters follow them from the void, which turns out to be an army of Deadpools. So many variants of Deadpools. <laughs> yeah, like a Texas one, a Shogun one. By the way, did you notice the lady pool was, uh, did you notice who played her? Who? Did the voice? No, who? Um, no, I'm, I'm blanking on her name. Dang it. <laughs> she's married to Ryan Reynolds. Oh, Blake Lively. Yeah, Blake, Blake Lively. Yeah, she's uh, Lady Pool. Oh, no. That would and make... then also the um, baby pool is, and the kid pool are their children. That makes so much sense. Yes. Oh, uh... So I think the one part that made my audience absolutely lose it was when uh, Wolverine and Deadpool were about to fight this army of Deadpools. Wolverine reaches behind him and he pulls out uh, uh, this mask. Uh, that's basically his mask from the comics. Yeah. Also, if you pay attention, they're pl- and this is like the other song that's like in my head. Madonna's Like a Prayer. Yes. That starts playing that moment. And as soon as she sings the line and it feels like home, on home is when the mask comes up. Yes. Um, and then we get a whole montage of them just killing all the Deadpools set to like a prayer, which is cool. <laughs> More I action. Think, I think give them credit uh, for thinking outside the box for some of these songs. I will say this. We need more action movies to use the song like a prayer. That would make uh, the action scenes a lot more fun. Imagine John Wick <laughs> like, with like a prayer. After there was one joke uh, made when they were meeting up with the outside, or the, the, rebel, the rebels. Uh, uh, Oh, uh, it was like uh, when Blade said, there's only one of me, and Deadpool just slowly looks to the camera like. Yeah, also they have the Punisher's rocket launcher. They don't specify which Punisher, though. Yeah. So there's like, what, was... five of them? Yeah. Well, there's that Punisher variant was dead. Yes. Uh, um, But they managed to beat uh, Cassandra because she wanted to wipe out all of the, the timeline so that it's just the void. Which again, they bring back like a prayer when they overload the machine. Yep. We gotta edit like a prayer into like other action. <laughs> Imagine, Will. What? 
Imagine like a prayer playing during the final scene of Samurai Cop 2, the showdown. Oh, God. That made the movie better. It would be. Like you said, it was way too self aware of itself. <laughs> yeah. Or in Velocipaster, we turn to the dinosaur at the end. Oh, no. We need to make those edits like we used to do. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll try to find time to uh, do that. Okay, cool. Cool. But... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, basically most of the, the most of the movie is just a, a bunch of cameos. Oh, and the Peter. Oh yeah, the Peter. Yeah, so um Peter from the first movie's or second movie's back. Yeah. And apparently every Deadpool loves their Peter. There's a Peter in every universe, or every Deadpool has a Peter. Yeah. And um I don't know if you noticed, but the uh, suit did not fit that Peter. We no, he did not. Yeah, he shows up to the other Deadpools um, in a, another Deadpool suit that does not fit him. And you can kind of see a little uh, down there. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. And then that lady from the Loki show, the one who runs the TVA, uh, sees this Peter and uh, seems to have the hots for him. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think it was because of you-know-what. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a fun movie. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like yeah, I, not... I think most of the spoilers were just all the cameos they had, which was the best part. Oh yeah, it was just cameo after cameo after cameo. And the action scenes were fun too. Oh yeah, when we got Deadpool versus uh Wolverine, it pretty much gave us what we wanted, and more, and more. By the way, have you ever noticed? And I, I picked up on this. While watching X Men Three with my wife, um, Juggernaut's always taken out by the kids. Yeah, because in the X Men Last Stand, wasn't he, he taken out by like Kitty Pride or something? Yeah, or the other boy Leech. Right. Yeah. Well, then it's Yukio and uh, Negasonic Teenage Warhead in the second uh, Deadpool movie. Yeah, it seems to be a recurring thing with Juggernaut. Yeah, he's whenever he's in live action, he's got to be taken out by kids. Yep. X twenty three takes him out in the uh, in the battle, or take it takes him out in the battle. Yeah, and he gets taken out by X twenty three in this one as well. Yeah. Which that was group that was good. Oh yeah. Oh, we found Psylocke was a part of that group. Hmm. Psylocke was part of the uh, Cassandra Novus group. Oh yeah, Psylocke. Yeah. But... There's a whole thing in the movie where they need Juggernaut's helmet. Yeah, so we just had a lot of fun with this movie. It pretty much gave you what you wanted when introducing Deadpool to Marvel Studios. Yep. And if this is uh, the last, uh, the last uh, of the franchise, then I guess this is kind of a good way to, like, you know, say goodbye to uh, the Fox universe and bring in this new universe. And a couple characters from Fo- the Fox universe. Yep. I-, I get a feeling like at least um, we it's implied that some characters were killed off but there's ways they can come back. Like we, we kind of see Elioth go towards the Ant-Man compound but we don't, after that we don't see uh, Electra Blade or Gambit so they could come back. Mm-hmm. x wing 3 was with them and we see her at the end. Yeah. So I don't think they're dead. I, th- I think they can come back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, basically all we can uh, say. Uh, we really enjoyed this movie, and we highly recommend you check it out. All right. So that's about it for our little mini-series of uh, reviews. Um, Jessup and I... Jessup will let me know when he, when he, he wants to do the next uh, review. Um, yeah, the marriage things are going to be a little rough for me to be doing reviews. Hopefully, I'm back. Yeah, for sure. But this might be the last one for a while. Who knows? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. But we'll keep you guys updated. All right, we will see you next time.